Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. So I've got you guys an update on some pretty active storm systems that are going to be moving over the central and eastern U.S. as we get later into October, or the rest of October, I should say, into early November. We're going to be talking more and more about snow as we get farther into fall and then towards winter because we are going to be seeing cooler temperatures. Um, but yeah, these storm systems are definitely going to be bring uh, more and more snow into some some different areas so starting out here looking at our current radar so we do have a st storm system coming through um behind it is there is we do have our cold front it's an arctic blast that's moving down uh towards texas you could even see down here in new mexico we actually do have some snow showers in central new mexico as far south as southern south of albuquerque really into the desert almost. I mean, you can see there's really no major roadways going through this area. So this is very unusual to see the snowfall. A lot of some snow flurries moving through uh, Kansas here. All right. But for the most part, it's staying as rain here in Texas. We got some pop up showers and thunderstorms. The heaviest rain is off to the northeast where we have uh, a, a big steady uh, area of rainfall really stretching from uh, southwestern Arkansas into southwestern uh kentucky here we see a big big band of rainfall it's really just marching its way up to the northeast all right and so um really gonna have to watch um watch for some flash flooding in some of these areas you could even see up here into uh the ohio valley and uh, ohio and indiana we still have some of that heavier rainfall but those bands are going to be kind of I, I don't know what you want to call it but i guess you could say calming down or diminishing as we get into the overnight hours all right, some, some rain, uh, relatively heavy rain moving over southern New England here. You could even see a pop-up shower or two in, in New York City, the metro area. All right, but other than that, we are pretty much dry and calm for the most part. So we'll go over to our alerts, see what we've, we'll we we'll take a look at what we've got going on today. So a lot of alerts to cover right here. You could even see starting out in this, uh, in this light blue, we have a freeze watch. This is very, very big, and... You know, this is probably the biggest like winter-related uh, watch or warning or whatever you want to call it that we've had since uh, winter of last year. So we see a big uh, freeze watch stretching all the way from portions of western PA all the way down to central Texas here, including, I believe this is including the DFW area. All right, you can see, yep, Dallas Fort Worth right there. Just north of that, we do have a freeze warning, and believe it or not, this goes into Texas. This goes right down through central and northern Texas, right towards the panhandle of Texas, all right, right along the Texas-Mexico borderline, all right? So this, this cold front's really digging far south, and you can even see, really, it just goes right through Oklahoma into portions of south, southern Kansas, into right up through straight, uh, through central Missouri and then into Illinois, um, Iowa, and then eventually southern uh, Wisconsin. But, man, this is a very big area. Even into southeastern New Mexico, we do have a freeze warning. And then we got another freeze watch out here for portions of southeastern uh, Arizona into southwestern New Mexico. All right. Um, and we do also have some, some winter weather advisories scattered around here because of that snowfall. Um, I don't think it's accumulating, but they have issued a uh, winter weather advisory for those areas. All right, so we have high wind warnings and high wind watches in out here in Southern California. It's been very, very windy. We've been so, we've been talking about gusts up to sixty for a long time, but I think these winds are definitely diminishing slowly. So we should probably start to see some calmer winds as we get into tonight. I don't think it's going to be nearly as bad as it was today as we get into tomorrow but still definitely watch these watch for these winds other than that we're pretty much calm out here in the northeast up here in maine we do have a winter weather advisory for but for the most part um that's really that's really it but we do also have appears that we have a coastal flood advisory um going out for the it pretty much goes up and down the coast the southern coastline of new jersey into um delaware here all right and so just make sure that you're aware that there will be there will be some coastal flooding in some areas tonight. So we go over to our to our current uh, temperatures here, and so I wanted to take a look at this also because Texas right now is freezing, like literally it's freezing. Okay, this was the 12Z GFS. I know the 18Z came out, but this was the 12Z, which shows 
a better example of how cold it got in Texas. So we put this up for our daytime. Well, we'll put this up for our morning temperatures. In the northwestern U.S., into the northern U.S., you're working up to the teens for many of you guys, the teens. And we're not even in November yet. So it really is not supposed to be this cold already. It should be in the 30s and 40s for all of you guys now. But if we're in the teens and the 20s, we are definitely past below average. We are, you know, right nearing our record. We're below zero for some areas out here in Montana. So it's been frigid, bone chilling cold is what you could call it for many out here in the western U.S. And even into California, the Sierras, we still see a stripe of some blue here. That's 30 to 20, getting down to almost 10 degrees here. And so notice how this cold, it really digs farther south. And then we see up here in northern Texas, 27 degrees. You're waking up at your northern Texas, a place that's been very, very hot this summer, um, and we're at, so we're in, so we're in the end of October here and it's 27 degrees. This is well below freezing here. This is crazy. And we even see New Mexico, which actually might've set the record for, uh, the, the most days I'm um, a city out here. I don't know. It might've set some, some record about the heat, um, this year. Well, actually you guys are pretty much the same story, um, out here in Northeastern New Mexico. All right, but a huge, huge cold blast. Here's our cold front right here, and here's our warm air. All right, and so we go into our daytime temperatures. We're getting into uh, 2 p.m. here. All right, we're still hanging on to the 80s out here in uh, many areas along the Gulf Coast into the southeast. You can see warmth is still spreading, surging into the southeast. Um, you can see the Carolinas baking at 80 degrees. Same thing for pretty much everyone. And well, including the Gulf Coast, you're nice. You're sitting nicely at around a good 85 degrees. So it's a pretty nice, uh, it's not very hot, but it's a nice hot day for most of you guys out in uh, the southeastern U.S. Even look at this, southern Texas. All right, so uh, I don't know if this is the Houston or Amarillo area. All right, you're in the 80s, and some of you guys getting into the lower 90s. You're in northern Texas, you're in the 30s, and some of you guys can even get in the 20s. That's... That's pretty crazy. One state gets that big of a difference. I mean, what is that? That is, that's almost a 65 degree uh, temperature differential. I mean, that is, that's crazy. Okay. That is insane to have, you know, once one part of the state, the Southern part of the state at around 92 degrees, the other part of the state in the twenties. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, how, how different that, that is, but we see the cold front right here. All right. It's status. Well, it's slowly pulling away from the northwestern U.S. Now, really digging into the south central U.S., the eastern U.S., you're chilly if you're in the north, down towards the Ohio Valley, though, if you're down here in the south, you're a little bit warmer, so you still hang on to warmth, but that's not going to last long. All right, so we get where we are pretty much a few hours ago. We're at 8 p.m. Uh, this was 8 p.m. today. All right, we've got cold really surging down. Um still but you know we're I mean, we're in the 20s we're in the teens um but notice how that warm air is starting to get kicked out to see and so now that cold front it's right here all right now it's pretty much allowed to in enter the eastern u.s but you know the rest is for the future so you know i was just i just wanted to show you guys what was going on in texas and then pretty much where our stat our cold front was all right but we'll move on to our nam 3 can model for the south central u.s so we look at um, basically what's going to be happening with our storm system right here. This was actually named this winter storm. I forgot what name it was, but if you, you could even go, um, you could look at the uh, twenty, the twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four winter storm names list, and you could actually, I, I believe, we're actually this is the first named storm. All right, but this has been named because we are actually we have gotten reports of blizzard conditions for some areas here. All right. Um, but you notice they've got very heavy snow in some areas going into Colorado, New Mexico, trying to battle off that high pressure. At the same time, we've got two areas out here in the South Central that are receiving bands of heavy rainfall. All right. As you can see right here, um, this stripe of very heavy rainfall this is stretching from central Arkansas going up into western uh, Kentucky. All right. That's going to definitely that's going to probably produce enough rain to cause some flash flooding so if any of you are 
have to tra- attempt to travel um, late tonight, you, d- you got to just make sure that you're watching out for those flooded roads because it's still going to be raining most likely by midnight because um, uh, this is 4 p.m. So really, the farther northeast you are, the farther ahead of the storm you are, the more likely it'll, it will be raining uh, later in the day. All right, and so we see still some some active thunderstorm buildup out here in uh, southern Oklahoma and northern Texas. This environment isn't really that great for uh, severe weather because, you know, you'd think that we do have a warm front here. We do have a cold front. They're both strong. So, yeah, that's we, we are definitely seeing thunderstorms, but we're not getting enough Gulf moisture. And this air coming down from Canada isn't dry enough. So that's really – that's why the component – Oh, that's the one of the main components of severe weather, and we that's we don't we just don't get that. And so, if rainfall moves up to the northeast, we don't really see much heavy rainfall as we get into to later into tonight, and then we get to tomorrow. I mean, maybe some more build up showers and thunderstorms. You could see, yeah, I would say, yeah, in central and southern Texas, we do actually end up with some more a second round, or you could even be a third round for some of some showers and thunderstorms, some wintry mix and icy mix out here for portions of uh, extreme western Texas here uh, up into the um, the panhandle. And we could even see a wintry mix all the way down towards uh, Mexico, portions of northern Mexico right between the border here. We could actually be dealing with some freezing rain and some sleet, but extremely high pressure. Look at this. I mean, this is ridiculous. 1,042 millibars of high pressure. I mean, that is high pressure. And that's really not, there is no moisture in this area. So, I mean, I guess it definitely, it it definitely is dry. Um, I did say that this cold front wasn't dry enough. All right. But I can rephrase that because you see here, all right, this, what we're, we're talking about this area right here. Okay. This area right here is our boundary of warm air and cold air that are pressing up against each other. You can see the warm air right here and the cold air right here. Okay, and so basically, what happens usually is that you have uh, you have cooler air coming down from north the the northwest, and then warm air with Gulf moisture surging uh, ahead of the storm. I right? but I think this cold front is really this high pressure. It's not. It has to be farther south, and it has to be off to the southeast. All right, I think that's how we would get more thunderstorm buildup. But we take this to tomorrow. All right, what do we get tomorrow? We're raking up to mostly rainfall for southern Texas. Again, that wintry mix for some areas farther to the west. All right, but that rainfall can't really do anything because that high pressure is really dancing around in this area. Um, and it's pretty much dominating the entire southern U.S. as this cold front advances farther south. So after, really after uh, the rest of the rainfall tonight into early tomorrow morning, I think we should be done with the rainfall here in the southern U.S. in general. All right. Excuse me. So we look at the uh, north central U.S. We're going to be talking about a clipper. All right. I know most of you probably know what a clipper is. I mean, a clipper is basically a weak and a weak area of energy that moves down from Canada, so usually associated with a cold front. And it sweeps usually sweeps across the Great Lakes and the central U.S., north central U.S. All right, that's what we call a clipper, and that brings snow. Okay, and so you, some clippers are actually pretty strong, though. Some clippers can bring a lot of snowfall, but this one isn't expected to be that strong, though. So we see a lot of lake effect snow right here. All right, as we're getting into tomorrow morning, we're waking up to a lot of lake effect snow, um, really for portions of northern uh, Wisconsin into Michigan here. Um, but here comes your clipper. You see, uh, all of a sudden a big band of, uh, of, I wouldn't say heavy snow, but light to moderate snow. But this, this system really starts to dive down and see, you can see a few pockets of very heavy snowfall coming in. We're getting into 10 PM tomorrow night. Okay. And we're dealing with very heavy snow over portions of northern Wisconsin. This is going into mainly central Minnesota where you're going to get the uh, the most, I would say, the, mo- the, the most extensive uh, band of snowfall. But these bands of snowfall will definitely, they won't last long, okay? Um, so it's really, it might it might even be like an hour of snowfall. Then you, you kind of sit for a bit and then 
the second band of snowfall comes in and you could even be dealing with four to five different bands of snowfall and i mean if each i mean it looks like that you know all these bands of snowfall could actually be able to produce at least an inch of snow certainly cold enough to stick on the ground so you may end up with a few inches of snow on the ground um uh pretty much for right in time for halloween all right so this clipper continuing to move through as we're raking up on halloween all right this is for tuesday and we got you can see it's very low, weak low pressure right here at 1015 millibars we got a lot of snow though very heavy snow moving over portions of wisconsin now into michigan still holding on to some lake effect snow all right um, over the northern portions of the state, but this actually goes too far south, and this actually turns a bit into rainfall. Not heavy rainfall, but this does something weird here. As it moves over the Great Lakes, notice a very intense band of rainfall and snowfall starting to form right as this crashes into uh, into Michigan. I think that this could really be the band of rain uh, snowfall, I should say, excuse me, that really dumps a few inches of snow, and if this continues to change from rain to snow, all right, so meaning that it's it's changing back to rainfall as it moves over the Great Lakes, but then back to snow as it, um, it moves into Michigan. If that continues to change to snow, that's how you're going to get a few inches of snow from the system. But this com almost completely falls apart. I mean, this is so weak that it, it really just gets disorganized and it falls apart over portions of uh, Ohio, um, but it, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a huge band of, I wouldn't say huge actually, but this is just a lot of heavy, heavy snow moving over northern uh, Ohio. So it could be a very uh, snowy and and uh, cold Halloween for many out here in the north central plains, mainly off to the east though, is where you're going to see some snow from this clipper system. So we look at how much snow exactly we could expect. So we put this out around 84 hours. Okay, so this would take us to November 2nd. All right, and you can see widespread at least a quarter of an inch. We see in these, in these dark blues here, this is pretty much, you know, around a quarter of an inch to in, an, inch, an inch snow. If you get a little lighter, you can see we're starting to see some ones starting to flash here. Um, so when this clipper comes in, it comes in strong, dropping you know, usually around half an inch to an inch of snow. But as this moves down farther south towards uh, portions of northwestern uh, northwestern Wisconsin, now we're starting to see some two inches, maybe to three inches of snow. In northern Michigan up here, look at this. We're seeing some, some purples here, four or five, maybe even six inches of snow. So if you're up farther north, that's pretty much going to tell you that you have a better chance of snowfall. It's really your placement because it's going to be a hit or miss. This is really going to be a hit or miss. Um, and this could change its projected um, trajectory. All right, so we just got to watch this. But uh, we see uh, rain spread to one to two, uh, around half an inch to one to two inches of snow out here in portions of western and central Um uh, Wisconsin. Then we go down to Michigan, and now we really get those snowfall totals. And this is the GFS is hinting that we could actually see that band of heavy snowfall a little bit further north, because this is where you get that signal of some some heavier snowfall amounts, maybe approaching five, six inches of snow. That's certainly pl plowable snow, but if you see these purples here or even these dark blues, you could really expect upwards of three inches of snow here. And so we could really be talking about. Um, a few inches of snow that could be on the ground as we get into Halloween. And we could even see in northern Indiana, look at this, two inches of snow. Same thing for you guys into even PA into uh, into western or eastern, excuse me, eastern Ohio. We could actually be dealing with one to two, maybe even up to three inches of snow as this clipper moves through. So we look at the GFS model now for our, our temperature anomaly. So for this last part of the update, I just want to look at what we could expect in the next few weeks. So we're talking about now, basically our temperature is based off of our historical average. So we're talking about if we're going to be above average or below average for temperatures. Right off the bat, you can see that we are completely below average, especially down here in the south central U.S. Look at Texas right here. We're 20 degrees below our historical average, but if you go down to the Gulf Coast of Texas, we're like 12 to 16 
degrees above average of our historical average. I mean, that is that. I mean, that's pretty crazy to see here. And so that's a very precise and sharp gradient between our uh, our very cold air and our very warm air. And so that could spark. That's why we're going to see some more rainfall and some more thunderstorm buildup. All right. But man, this is this cold air is dominating the western and centrally west, and this that's just gonna shove all this warm air off to the east. So now you're gonna get a brief warm up here in the northeast, in the mid Atlantic, and then down to the southeast. But this cold front is not slowing down; it's just gonna continue to push this warm air out of the air, uh, warm air out of the eastern west. And all of a sudden, you can see that this another Arctic blast, like almost a backup of an Arctic blast starting to come down slowly, creeping down from southeastern Canada, and boom, it takes over the northeastern U.S. So that's going to completely help this cold front, and it's pretty much going to swallow the northeastern U.S. And so now all that's left of this warm air is just the southeast. They, you know, the, like I'm talking about the Carolinas here, the the uh, the coast of the coastal southeast and the mid Atlantic. All right, and so as you as you pretty much all know that that warm air does not stand a chance, and that cold air just moves right in. And now, pretty much at this point in time, which is here we go, we got Halloween on our hands right here. This is we're waking up on Halloween, and everybody is below average. And if you're in the central U.S., you are just hoping that you are going to warm up at some point and that's not going to happen for a few days because we are still dealing with very cold air now going down towards the ohio valley and the tennessee valley as we get into uh wednesday which would be the beginning of november but what that means is that this cold front's advancing farther east that's going to allow warm up a warm up and some warmer air to start slowly but it's going to slowly enter the Western U.S. That's how things work in our pattern. We Every pattern is different, but what we're seeing here is we're seeing basically one half of the country warm, one half of the country cold, all right? We just entered a pattern flip-flop, all right? So we had warm air in the south, cold air in the north, and that completely flip-flops. So now we've got cold air in the east, warm air in the west, warm air in the west, all right? And so this cold air starts to get a little weaker because this warm air is starting to, you know, starting to fire up a little bit. And so this warm air is actually going to have a period where it's going to try and take over the western and central U.S., kind of like how the cold air did here. And this isn't that far out. This is this is about uh, it's about six days out, so pretty it's pretty much a week out, just just a little under a week out here. Um, so we could be dealing with still some slightly below average temperatures in the east, uh, but we're starting to see a little bit of a warm up here in the west and in the central west. And so what happens here? Well, we don't really see any signs of cold air, but then we do get a little bit of a dip and a dive in our jet stream. Uh, we see what happens there. Not much. All right. So we doubt we actually just got uh, over another pattern flip, man, another pattern flip. All right. As we get into November, now we see this warm air. It's going to start to surge to the north. It's going to go pretty much from here and it's going to go like that. All right, that's going to put this cold air down to the south or it's just going to go out to sea. I right, that that's the those are the only two ways it can go. All right, and so this warm air, I would say this warm air actually this warm air would probably logically it wouldn't go to the north and go to the south. So you're probably going to see Warm air in the south again, and then cold air in the north. All right, so what happens here? Well, that's pretty much exactly what it does. It goes pretty much down south, and then that's going to allow another Arctic blast to come through. And that's where we're going to get another pattern flip. But, man, I think November really is going to be, like, a heck of a month for really temperatures, but also snowstorms. But, I mean, this is too far out to really do edit to say anything about this, other than that this is a small signal of what could happen in the future. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is really, wow. This is, I think that we're really going to get a kickstart, a big kickstart on into winter here. And I, I mean, this is great. I mean, we're talking 16 to 20 degrees below our historical average, all the way down into portions of central Mexico. That's not even, that's not, that's past the Gulf Coast. All right, let's let's take a look at our temperatures here. Just see what 
what we could actually be expecting here. Wow, we're in the 40s. That is, that's ridiculous. Oh, that's, we're in the 40s along the Gulf Coast. I bet you that if we were, let's take this back a year ago from now, all right, we would most likely be in the 70s and 80s if you're on the Gulf Coast. But that is, that's, that's so crazy that this cold, these cold, upcoming cold fronts and cold blasts could be. So, to wrap, to wrap things up, we're going to briefly look at the 12Z GFS, all right? I just want to be talking about uh, a upcoming storm signal that's, you know, it's showing a few potential uh, big snowstorms for some areas in the eastern U.S. So I just want to talk about what the 12Z has been, has been saying. The 18Z has been has been having a little trouble picking these up, all right? Um, so I just want to show the 12Z for the heck of it. I mean, I don't want to get all of you guys hyped up, but those snow lovers out there, you could get excited for this one because I think that some areas will definitely see a few inches of snow, all right? And so we look at what really I'm talking about here. Well, we have a big storm system that's crashing in the northwestern U.S. coming out of the Pacific. Well, usually what this does is it will ride the jet stream, then dip farther south, and then it will really just do its thing across the central and eastern U.S. So we see what happens with this storm, and it does. But then it breaks off from its really its, its entire main part of it, and that's that's, that's going to pretty much act as a clipper. All right, and that's going to, maybe it's going to organize itself and then uh, meet up with some rainfall here in the uh, off the coast of the Carolinas, and that could actually organize into a system. We don't know yet. All right, but here comes another plume of moisture coming out of the northwest, and what does this do? Well, it takes its time. It's trying to get away from that, uh, that high pressure, and it does form something out here. Look, very far south. We get a lot of rainfall and maybe a thunderstorm event, maybe severe thunderstorm event for the southeast. But look at this right here. We'll pause it right here. This is November 1st or November 10th. Sorry, November 10th. And we got a big system, but it's very far south. And so this right here is the traditional setup for a nor'easter. Do not, do not, please do not, if you're in the northeast or if you were in the southern New England, do not expect an oyster that's going to bring feet of snow to your backyard um, on November 10th. All right, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. This is definitely going to change. This could not even be any, I, this could not even look like anything what we're going to see. This is just a small signal of what could possibly happen 282 hours out based off of the 12Z GFS on October the 29th, all right? That's how precise this is, okay? But what I'm showing you guys here is that the GFS is showing a what what, what it what looks like a traditional nor'easter setup, is you get a plume of moisture, a, a relatively organized system that really gets going across the, south, the deep southeast, okay? And it could go in either two ways. It could go kind of right between, like up the coastline here, hugging the coast, or it could kind of go out to sea, um, but you still have that those bands of moisture reaching into the northeastern coastline. Those are the two ways a nor'easter usually goes. So what does this do? Well, it goes right up the coast, okay? Extreme heavy rainfall moving over the northeast and the mid-Atlantic, and it shows a it shows a snowstorm. It does show a snowstorm, and it shows actually a very intense snowstorm we could even look at the northeast zoom in here all right what, what, what do we see here well we see a lot of heavy rainfall but you know in the in the mountains out here in the northeast the this catskills um in the appalachian mountains appalachian region we see a lot of snowfall but i mean if this i mean this is a 995 millibar system here this is what is this 300 and three exactly 300 hours out well, we got a big chunk of the northeastern U.S., including a snowfall, a big snowfall event. And this is, I mean, this is like a warm-up for what we could expect for this winter because um, we are expecting a lot of snowfall in this area. But I know last year was a pretty much a dud. So I, I know that once once you guys see this in the northeast, especially out here on the coastline, I think I know once you guys see this, you're going to go crazy. But again, this is 300 hours out. That's a long time, all right? And so we have a long time to wait for this thing to develop and we still get a signal or this could the signal could just you know go away fade away 
or this could change and we could actually expect rainfall for most of these areas. But what do we get off the 12th? Well, we get a full-on nor'easter that brings a lot of heavy snowfall to the northeastern U.S. And it's pretty much a traditional nor'easter, but it's happening in early November. We really don't know what exactly is going to happen, um, but then that thing moves out. We look at what's going be- going on out here in the rest of the U.S., um, and we're pretty much calm after that. But uh, I also want to mention that we are watching the tropics. We got another tropical wave entering the Caribbean that we're slowly keeping our eyes on it because the GFS has been hinting this becoming at least a, a, a tropical storm, potentially a hurricane. But, you know, it's, again, it's really far out, so we don't know exactly what's going to happen. So that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you all for coming to watch. I'll see you guys in the next video. So we got to watch the storm signal we gotta watch definitely these very very cold temperatures these freezing uh conditions out here so if you have any rainfall on those roadways that's all gonna freeze overnight um cre- creating a slippery scene out there but i hope you guys have a great night um i hope you guys have a great halloween because we are approaching halloween i'm gonna try and do an update for you guys tomorrow if not i'll t- try and get one hopefully before halloween but And I will just see what happens with my schedule. So thank you all for coming to watch. And I'll see you guys next video.